just wanted to share real quick. Um, and what this message is, it's a little different. Be concerned when they stop laughing. I, I'm going back to the uh, 80s. I uh, went to Memphis State soon. I was on a uh, academic scholarship, ROTC, uh, taking honors English. And somehow I found a way to bungle all of that. And so while my, uh, even though I had excellent grades and was taking honors classes, uh, it just wasn't the pill for me at the moment. I had a, a yearning for uh, the same industry that my dad was in. Uh, my dad's been in the automobile industry for years. And so I applied at Tom Bell Chevrolet and of course, instead of calling my references, they called my dad. And my dad said, don't hire him. <laughs> I think we went through that about seven or eight times. And then I kept coming and kept coming. So finally they hired me to my dad's dismay. Uh, but at 22, people were laughing. This guy, he's just selling cars. And uh, I laughed and I kept working. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, how uh, you can progress through a career by sticking to it. So um, I kept pushing, start to see a measure of success. So, you know, in 88, I made like $40,000. I'm 22. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, I'm seeing, you know, my friends are just starting to graduate. And then I start my 20 year, the rest of my 18 plus more years in the car business and made many highs, many lows, saw the Rolex watch, saw uh, five figure month, saw eight grand months, sometime several, you know, here and there. Uh, and worked with a guy once that were, uh, I don't think I ever worked anywhere in the car business and mo most of the latter years, uh, probably except Lexus and Mercedes, but everybody, everywhere else, whatever the pay plan everybody else was on, I was on a different plan. So folks, look, if you're good enough, you can do your own deal, do your own piece. Um, but, uh, had success there, worked with a guy once in 95, uh, selling Cadillacs. And this guy showed me his check at the end of April, and he was 156 for the year. So folks, look, a lot of people behind the gated communities that you find, they're in sales. It's not, you know, the MBAs may be there, but a salesperson is surely there. Did that, got out of that business uh, because it's hard to stay a good, good preacher and be in the car business every day. It's just too much of too many things, and I'll leave it at that. Um, and uh, moved to another industry, reinvented myself, uh, went into the uh, 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 copy of business, saw a measure of success there. Had my own office for a long distance service. Did pretty good there. Uh, merchant services did that while I was selling Lexus. Did good there. And then I started in the cemetery business. The first time I stood a funeral in the cemetery business, I saw a lot of people come in on a service that I knew. And I was exceptionally embarrassed because I'm here by the dirt. I'm here. Uh, at grace, I not knowing what to do, and people had known me in another space. So, so I'm getting somewhere now. When you leave a space that you've been in, so many people think that you've regressed, but you're just starting at the bottom and working your way back to the top in a whole new space. So I went there, and as I did it more. I got less shame and less shame and less shame. And, you know, I heard the little things. Uh, somebody said, Steve's actually out there 
selling grace and that would cause the big old laugh. I even had a preacher uh, who was an elder with me at Temple Deliverance said, this is what you do every day and laughed at me. And so I've had those laughs, but when every salesman on the Poplar Corridor started to know who I was, all of a sudden, people stop laughing. When they know you at the Mercedes dealership, when they know you at James Davis, when they know you at Old Call, all of a sudden, people didn't laugh quite as much. You gotta have the boldness to enter another space. All of a sudden, a, a level of confidence comes and I'm not in that space anymore. And I have people who challenge it because people block for you a space that, for you to fit. But when you start shopping with the Poplar Corridor, it's hard to operate in a space where most can't. And I'll leave that at that. So, uh, you got to keep risk being laughed at. I'm about to enter a new space and people are going to laugh again. But what I found out in one in business, I started in the car business and a lot of people would stay out in the lot all day long. I never liked that. I, I, I never liked fighting at the door to catch that customer. And that was to the bane of so many uh, managers that I had in the car business before I became a manager. Uh, their bane was that I wouldn't get in front of enough people, but I just didn't like the fight and the scramble to do that. So I got on that phone and I called and I feel like I have a better chance selling somebody that comes in the door asking for me. And that proved right. I, I've, I remember one day in the car business where I had 14 customers there at the same time. That ended up being an epic fail because some people walked out of the door angry because they couldn't talk to me and I had to flip them to some other salesmen. But it was a six and a half car day. So, look, if they're not laughing, be scared. Enter another space. As long as your mind is right, business is good or bad in any industry that you enter, right between your ears. I talked with a guy yesterday, and he's in four-stage cancer. He's been in the merchant processing space, and this guy's making a boatload of money. Uh, and he's still excited about the business, even though he's dealing with ills in his body. So look, if they're not laughing, that's when you worry. Everybody can't see what you see. Everybody's not gonna have your vision. Everybody's not gonna have your goals. Keep pushing and right beyond that next door knock, that phone call, whatever means that you're marketing yourself is the life of your dreams. If you go behind the gated communities of our world, most times you'll find a salesperson most a lot of those people are salespersons I had a thing on my wall that said timid salespeople have skinny kids uh, don't be scared don't be afraid let them talk let them laugh you just keep pushing to feed your family and at the end of the day no matter all the glitz and glamour of business if somebody doesn't sell something Production minus sales equals scrap. Keep your head up. Let them laugh. You just keep plugging until you hit the target. Have an awesome day.